Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, thanks for joining. I'm Erica Stacey from Scout Digital Training. Lovely to have you join me this afternoon. And thank you very much for rescheduling. I was very unwell last week. I had a horrible, horrible head cold and I was struggling to sit upright, let alone deliver any training or any webinars of any topic, regardless of how well I know it. So uh, thank you very much for rescheduling. Great to have you join me this afternoon. Uh, we're gonna be running for um, about an hour, might be a little bit under. Anyone who knows me knows that I can chat and chat and chat about this stuff though. Uh, so we're running for about an hour uh, talking about Google Search Console and getting to know Google Search Console. Um, this webinar is being recorded as well. So as registrants, you will automatically receive a link to watch the replay afterwards. So if you aren't able to stop for the full session or would like to watch that replay later on where you can pause it and follow along with some of the activities, because I'm going to be touching on, on a few things you can do um, relatively quickly. Uh, due to the, nat the short nature of this session, uh, you'll be able to watch that back afterwards as well. And we'll also be adding it to the webinars section of our website. So you can actually watch all of our previous webinars, whether you registered for them or not, in the webinars section on our website. Um, we're building up quite a few there now between Google Analytics and Google Ads, um, SEO, and now Google Search Console as well. So, Quick little pop quiz to start off. I know lots of you have found the chat section on the, I always get confused with the camera, um, on the side of the screen. Uh, if you can just let me know whether or not you are using Google Search Console already, if your site is set up and verified, um, yes, no, or not sure, I'll just get you to pop all of your answers in there in the chat box so I can get a bit of a feel for who we're talking with today. Uh, I'll let those come in for a few minutes. The other thing I'll just mention, a bit of housekeeping, um, there is a question section below, I think it's the same for you, um, a question section below the main screen area where you can actually type in some questions and I'll keep an eye on those and I can answer those if I'm already not planning on answering them during the course of the session. So usually catch up on those towards the end um, unless they're related. So a bit easier to keep track of those uh, questions rather than the chat box. Um, okay, some people having sound issues. Yeah, might have to try like a mute, unmute, see if there's anything plugged in. You can't hear me anyway. I don't know why I always do that. Um, but yes, getting a bit of a sense here. Some people using Google Search Console, some people not using Google Search Console. Uh, so all good. I'm going to be get, running through a higher level understanding of what it is for you today. Uh, firstly, I've had this conversation with a couple of people in the last few days. Yeah, I'm only I'm only displaying small today, Bianca. <laughs> I, I don't want to completely fill up the screen. I'll, I'll concentrate on the on the slides. Um, I'll stick down here in the bottom of the screen. Um, so yes, uh, I've been doing a lot of training on different Google topics over the last few weeks. So particularly Google Ads, we're doing Google Ads, Google Analytics, Google Search Console. Um, and one of the things that's come up quite often is why are there so many products? Why don't they just put these all together? Because often we talk about how important it is to integrate Google Analytics with Google Ads so you can see the flow through from the traffic that comes from your Google Ads to your website and what they do on your website. And there's an integration option between Google Search Console and Google Analytics as well, which I will show you during this session. Um, and it is a very good question, but also each of these tools and platforms have been created for generally a very specific purpose. They don't have to all be used together. They can be helpful to use them together and you can get benefits from it, but it's not essential. So Google Analytics is purely about the analytics on your website. If you're not using Google Ads, then Google Ads are obviously not important to you. But if you are using Google Ads, it's helpful to connect those two together. Um, Google Search Console, I absolutely think is relevant to anybody who has a website, uh, but again, it is different to Google Analytics as you will find out. But it did lead me to do a little bit of research and I found this list of products on Google's website. So not sure if you're familiar, but this is um, uh, um, 
a whole heap of different products that Google make available to all users. So they classify them into a couple of sections. So this is their for all products. Uh, so they've got their uh, like literal products. So things like the Chromebook, the Pixel phone, um, Google Home, those types of things. They've also got the Chrome web browser. They've got their own um, software products with Docs and Gmail and those types of things. And even though I'm familiar with the majority of these, I was quite shocked at how many Google products there actually are. And this is not all of them. This is just the ones that they classify as being for everyone and anyone. So YouTube, which they own and those types of things, Google Maps. Um, but then they've also got their extra products. So their products they see as purely business products. And also we'll see that's where you can see Google Analytics uh, in that section, also Google Ads, also Search Console. They're the most um, common and popular ones that businesses tend to use. Uh, we've also got Tag Manager in there as well, Google My Business, which lots of people who um, have physical locations and want to appear on Google Maps, they can use Google My Business. Um, so all of these separate products, which you can kind of tap into depending on, on what your needs are. And then you can see down the bottom, slightly obscured, but they've got their extra um, uh, products specifically for developers as well. So huge amounts of Google products. And there's a very, um, I imagine... I don't know this for sure, but I imagine it would be very challenging at this point in time to actually redevelop some of these products to integrate them together, uh, simply because of the scale and the history of their use and the number of users. Actually migrating all of that content would be a massive, massive um, process. They are, have been doing some big changes, particularly in their ads platform. There was a lot of rebranding and shuffling around that happened in ads last year. And even with Google Search Console, uh, we're in this weird phase at the moment. Anybody who has used Google Search Console may know what I'm going to talk about, but we have old Search Console and new Search Console. So for years and years and years, we had uh, the typical Search Console, which was actually originally called Webmaster Tools. It was rebranded re in 2015 to be called uh, Search Console rather than Webmaster Tools, but it's still accessible through the Webmaster Tools section. Um, and yeah, uh, over the last year, they've been transitioning between the old format for Search Console and the new format. So you can actually flip between the two of them at the moment. Not all of the features have been moved across. Um, I am going to be concentrating on new Search Console today because for people who do join up, they do now get shown new Search Console by default. And it's something that I'm just going to have to get used to as well. Uh, but they have made quite a few changes to a few features and they've changed most of the terminology, which I'm finding really challenging because I uh, knew, knew where everything was in old Search Console and knew what everything was called, but now everything's changed. So hopefully, I've made all my notes, um, hopefully I'll be able to keep up and make sure uh, you guys are across all those new sections as well. So like I mentioned, Google Search Console was previously called Google Webmaster Tools. I often refer to it as a health check for your website in Google's organic search engine. So this is all about how your website looks in Google's um, uh, search engine, so google.com.au. So what's happening to your website, to people searching for information they could find on your website in Google search engine before they come to your website. And that's why it's different to Google Analytics. So similar to Google um, Ads, uh, Google Ads are all about people finding your website, but then once they've clicked on your ad and they found your website, we boot them over to your website and Google Analytics takes over. Same thing with Google Search Console. Google Search Console is just telling you about how Google sees your website in their search engine. And then once they visit your website, then Google Analytics can take over. So Search Console tools and reports, as I say, he help you measure your site's search traffic and performance, fix issues and make your site shine in Google search results. So very much something that comes up in SEO. Uh, so I talk about Google Search Console a lot in our SEO training. We go into a bit more detail there. So I'm just going to be touching on a few of the main features for you today. Um, anybody who's had issues with sound and power, just a reminder that the recording of this video will be available afterwards. So you can go back and watch any bits that you've missed. Though we're just getting to the juicy stuff now. Uh, so these are some of the main benefits that I see from Google Search Console and the ones that I'm going to focus on today. So the big one is with Google Search Console, you can give Google direct access to your web pages. 
So this means their search engine spiders, which you might also um, have heard referred to as crawlers or Google bots. These are basically the little computer programs that run around the internet, scanning pages and putting that content into Google's search engine database so that it can be returned in search results. Uh, Google Search Console gives you the, the ability to say, Google, here are all of the pages of my website that I want you to index. Please index them for me. Um, and so rather than having to wait for one of those search engine spiders to jump onto your website from a link from another website, because that's how the spiders move around, think spiders, World Wide Web, they need to jump from one link to another, that's how they move. Uh, rather than waiting to, for them to jump off another website that links to your website, we can actually go, here's all the pages, go your hardest. Um, really helpful for brand new websites to get brand new websites into the search engine quite quickly. But even if your website has already been established and is already indexed, you can still use this to make sure it stays up to date as well. Uh, Search Console will also let you know when your website is indexed, or crawled and indexed. So this gives us that understanding of how current our search engine results are. So without this, we don't necessarily know if the search engine is up to date, particularly if we're publishing new content or we're creating new pages on our website and to see whether or not they're included. Um, I tend to use the example like kind of back in the day when we were tracking this a bit more manually, it might take the search engine spiders, they travel around, around the web, um, they'll go back and visit previous websites that they have uh, crawled and indexed to see if there's any new content, but that could take two or three weeks as an example. So you might be publishing a new blog post or new events on your website or updating products or pricing and those types of things, um, which if people went to your website, they would see that new content. But if people were searching for your website, they may not be able to find any new pages, new products, new events until that content has been um, crawled by the search engine spiders and indexed so that it's available in the search index. So this will actually let us know exactly when the website has been indexed. Uh, search Console also advises you about any crawl errors that might occur on your website. And a crawl error can occur either when a URL has changed, so it's created a broken link and they can no longer find the previous link that they tried to, um, or that they index when they're trying to again. Uh, um, so that, that page or URL might not exist anymore. Um, also, if there's any issues with a server, the server being down, so they haven't been able to index and crawl the site appropriately, uh, a slow loading page, um, spiders don't like slow pages. They've got a little, little amount of time to jump onto your website and crawl it. So if a page is taking too long to load or a site's taking too long to load, they can, they can jump off. So all these things happen occasionally and it's quite normal and it's not a terrible thing. But if they continue to happen over time, so more and more and more of your pages have broken links, your site's taking longer and longer to load, the search engine spiders aren't able to index it because it's too slow, uh, that can have long-term issues with your search engine rankings. So Google Search Console will advise you if there are any crawl errors on your website, what they are, and then you or your developer can go through the process of fixing them. Uh, search Console will also let you know when your website appears in search results. So not just the traffic that comes from search engines, but all the times that a result for your website um, actually appears in search engine, uh, in Google search engine, um, and also what search queries your site appears for. So uh, another terminology thing, Search Console uses the term search queries. You probably know that more so as keywords when we think about what keywords are bringing people to our website. Search Console keeps track of all of that as well. Uh, and it's, like I mentioned, can be really helpful for getting new or updated pages indexed fast. So rather than just waiting for the search engine to, or the spider rather, to um, come around and re-index our site, if we've just published a new um, event or product or post on our website, we can actually submit that directly to Google just as an individual page. And in my experience, it tends to get it into the search engine sometimes within half an hour, 15 minutes, half an hour, I've had pages um, up here. 
So what we're going to be going through today, uh, going to be quickly running through setting up and verifying your website in Google Search Console. I've got a couple of screenshots and a bit of demo. And like I mentioned, you might want to watch this video back and go through it slowly um, if you're going to do this to your own site. Uh, also going to be going through submitting an XML sitemap using the URL inspection tool, which used to be called Fetch as Google, for anybody who has heard me talk about it before. Uh, I'll just let you know where you can see crawl errors um, on your website. Won't be able to go through all of the different error messages, but just so you're aware of it and can keep an eye on it. Just touching on security and manual actions and what that means, and then that, that all important search queries section as well. So first of all, verifying your website. Uh, you can just Google Google Search Console and it will take you. Otherwise, this is the link um, search.google.com forward slash search hyphen console will take you through to this page. Uh, and there's a button here to start now. So you can click on start now. It's going to prompt you to log in with a Google account. I highly, highly recommend logging in with the same Google account or your primary Google account that you use for your other Google products, particularly Google Analytics. It will make it much easier to verify your website if you have the one Google account that you use. Um, and bonus points if you use that same Google account for Google Ads and Google My Business and all of those types of things. Really helpful to keep all of these products together so you're the common link between them all. Um, so you can go there and click on Start Now. You can add, just like with Google Analytics, you can add other users to your website property. Once it's been set up and verified within Google Search Console, um, but from your perspective, from a kind of a super admin or a webmaster perspective, really helpful to have that master primary Google account. Google account, when I say Google account, it doesn't mean it has to be a Gmail account. Any email address can be set up as a Google account. So the most important thing is it's an email address that you have access to regularly because they do send out notifications um, occasionally. So you want to be able to make sure you see those. So if you're brand new to Google Search Console and you click on that Start Now button, log in with your Google account, it's going to step you through the process of adding a new property immediately. Um, I'm uh, a long time user of Google Search Console and I have access to a number of different properties, but you can view them one at a time from that drop list. Uh, if you do have an existing account with no properties or are wanting to add a new property in it, you can simply click on that top left hand corner and click on the add property. Gonna get to that back <laughs> and click on the add property down the bottom. Um, and like I mentioned, you can add extra. Uh, website properties in there as well. I'm showing some screenshots at this point because I do have some client information in here which I'm not able to share with you. Happy to show you my own stats and data um, but don't want you to be able to see client information. So we click on add property and that's going to bring up this new box which is select property type. So previously the only option we had was to add a URL prefix which meant we needed to specify a specific domain um, and the prefix that we wanted included for it. So HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.scoutdigitaltrain.com.au, which was actually considered different to HTTP colon uh, forward slash forward slash scoutdigitaltraining.com.au without the www dot. And if you then change your site to HTTPS, you had to set up another property within Google Search Console for HTTPS. So that's the old way of using Google Search Console. I was very excited today to see that there is a new option for domain where you can just pop your domain in. So I would 100% recommend just include your domain. So no HTTP, no HTTPS, no www, just your core domain for your website because that's automatically going to manage the other variations as well. So much easier and a great improvement that um, uh, Google Webmaster Tools have made. So if I have a um, sub website or a specific website called scoutdt.com.au, I type that directly into that domain box um, and click on continue. It's gonna go through a process of verifying my property. 
Um, some people get really excited when I say all these things like you can find out issues with your site and search queries and they assume that they can get access to anybody's information. Um, you do actually need to verify that you own this website and you have permission to see this information that Google has about your website. So it do need to go through the verification process. Uh, there are five different ways that you can verify ownership of your website. Um, and those are uh, a HTML file, which you can download a specific file, and then it needs to be uploaded to your website. So that will need to go through your hosting server or your file manager. It may be something that you can do if you're comfortable, or it may be something you need to get your developer to do. And then once that file has been up up uploaded, you can come back to um, Google Search Console and click on verify, and it will let you know um, if that has been successful or not. If one particular verification method hasn't been successful, you can go on and try other methods. And to be honest, I always like to start with Google Analytics <laughs> rather than the HTML um, uh, verification file, uh, particularly if you're using the same Google account that you use to log in to Google um, Search Console and Google Analytics, Often this is the quickest and easiest way of verifying your account. So I'd always encourage you to try verifying through um, using your Google Analytics account first of all. As you can see, there are a couple of conditions in regards to the tracking code, how it's been added to your website, and you need to have the edit permission for that Google Analytics property. Um, and you can click on verify. Otherwise, if that doesn't work, you do have those other options of uploading the file, or there's a HTML tag that you can add to your website's homepage. There's instructions for all of these when you open it. Again, that one might need a website developer to help you. Um, if you're using Google Tag Manager, you can use Google Tag Manager to verify your Google Search Console account. And then the fifth option is to sign into your uh, domain name provider and associate a DNS record with, um, with Google. So I find, unless they've made some changes, I find with the domain name provider, it tends to be very US centric and I haven't had um, any success using that option with uh, the more common Australian based domain providers. So that does need to be done um, before you actually get any information within Google Search Console. Even after you've signed up, you need to have that property um, verified by one of those methods. Um, we go. I'll just jump back to my account now. There we go. Um, so you can see this is what my account looks like. I have my verified website in here. We can see the um, domain in the top left hand corner and it gives me access to all of these different features on the left hand side. So I will go through performance and coverage and I've mentioned URL inspection, but I do want to chat about sitemaps first of all. So like I mentioned, this is how you can give Google direct access to all of the pages of your website by submitting an XML sitemap. Um, the sitemap, an XML sitemap, it's actually purely designed for search engines. It's not a pretty looking sitemap. So it's not like, I don't see them on websites these days, but back in the day, it was very common for websites to have a sitemap page, which listed all the pages of your website so the user could actually um, find the page they were looking for. These days we focus more on um, having great navigation and making it really clear uh, where, how we want people to move through our websites. So that's not quite as necessary. So this XML sitemap is literally a feed of pages for Google to say this is the direct link to the pages and all, often it will also include information about uh, when the page I'm sorry, when the um, URL was last chat, last updated, how often it changes, and even how important it may be in relation to other URLs on the website. So your homepage, for example, um, uh, may be defined as being a more important page on your XML sitemap than your um, privacy policy page or terms and conditions that doesn't get changed very often. Uh, so just to keep in mind, like I mentioned, this is not a pretty looking 
uh, page at all, <clears throat> but they can look slightly different for different websites. So like I said, most of them can be found by typing in sitemap.xml um, at the end of your domain. To, that's a really good way to start uh, and find out if you do have one. Um, I have a WordPress website and I use the Yoast SEO plugin, which automatically generates an XML sitemap. Um, and it actually creates multiple sitemaps. So for different sections of your site. So I have a post sitemap, which is for all of the blog posts on my website. So you can see here, it's not, it's not pretty. <laughs> it's purely for search engines. It shows the URL of every page within the blog, how many images it has and when it was last updated. So we can see that goes on and on and on down there. And we've also got a pages sitemap. So a lot of websites will only have one sitemap page if they do have one. Uh, but um, Yoast generates those, those different sitemaps and groups content together by category. Either way is perfectly fine. It's just going to depend on how you actually add it. Um, if you can't find an XML sitemap for your website, uh, I would firstly ask your developer um, if you work with a developer and see if they know there might be a slightly different URL uh, that you can use to access that or sometimes just googling whatever your content management system is an XML sitemap like Google um, Squarespace XML sitemap and they'll usually give you a bit of direction as to whether or not it's available. Generally speaking we want to make sure we're using what's called a dynamic XML sitemap in which means any new pages are automatically being added to the sitemap. Um, the other option, which I used to use a lot with uh, older websites, is you can generate a static XML sitemap and upload that to your website. So usually you can um, Google something like XML sitemap generator and it, um, there are some tools and some free tools that will actually um, go through and crawl your website, create that file that lists all of the pages of your website. Um, gives you that .xml file that you can upload to your website and then you will have that URL to submit. The issue with that option is it's not dynamic. So if you add new pages to your website with new URLs, it's not going to automatically add them. You'll need to create a new um, sitemap file, upload it to replace the other one. If the actual sitemap, if, if the file name stays, stays the same and the URL stays the same to that sitemap, um, you won't need to update that in Search Console. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind if you're using what we call a static XML sitemap rather than a dynamic XML sitemap. So once you actually have that sitemap and you know what the URL is to that sitemap, you can jump back into Google Search Console and come down to the sitemap section. Now, I've already done this on my website. So if it were a brand new website, we wouldn't be seeing this table down the bottom here. Um, and you would just need to add your new sitemap at the top. So we can see here um, if my URL um, to my sitemap was sitemap.xml, I could click on submit and it would send that through to um, uh, Google Search Console. As you can see here, I've previously submitted my sitemaps using that method. And I've, because of that Yoast, uh, the way that Yoast generates a sitemap, I've picked the four most important um, sub sitemaps that I want indexed. There are some other ones that Yoast creates that I don't uh, feel are as valuable for my search results. So I've um, added all of them separately. And you can see here, it gives us the type. So what it, what it is, which is a sitemap, um, when it was last, uh, sorry, when it was first submitted to Search Console, um, when it was last, oh, sorry, when it was last submitted to Search Console, when it was last read, which means when your website was last indexed, which shows us how current and up to date our results are, what the status is, so if it was successfully crawled or if there are any issues with it, um, and then the number of URLs that they've been able to discover on there as well, which should relate to the number of um, uh, URLs that are actually on each of those pages there. There's also some more information you can see on each of these to go back and see, you know, if there are any errors, um, what the issues are, uh, what valid URLs have been submitted, and if there are any that have been excluded for some reason as well. And that may be URLs that you've chosen to exclude that you don't actually want indexed. 
So super, super useful um, to be able to get that understanding of how up to date the content in Google's search engine is by submitting that sitemap. So after verifying, I would always jump into submitting um, your XML sitemap. There's, abs there's a lot of other tools you can use without doing that, but this one's really, really helpful for you to do. Okay, a couple of other things we can look at doing within Google Search Console, which I recommend is, um, one of them is URL inspection. So this follows on quite well from sitemaps. So with sitemaps, we're giving Google the links to all of the pages of our website and having an understanding of how recently they were um, submitted and indexed. With inspect URL, this is the tool that used to be called fetch as Google. We can actually um, uh, put a specific, submit a specific URL, which is really great if it's a new page or a page that you have updated content on, submit it um, directly to Google. And like I mentioned, this is the one that can get it indexed quite quickly. So sometimes within 15 minutes, half an hour type thing. So one of the processes that we have here at Scout is every time we publish a new event, or you know, update an event or publish a new blog post, we go and submit that to um, Google Search Console through the URL inspection so that we know our new content is available in the search engine as quickly as possible rather than waiting for Google to come around and re-index our entire website. So here's a post that we published yesterday. I believe this may have already been submitted um, because like I mentioned, we have this process of you know publish a new post, uh, put it into Google Search Console, make an annotation in Google Analytics, um, but we'll still go through the process. Um, so yeah, really great for updated and new URLs, but just doing them one at a time. So Google will go and look for this URL in its index to find out whether or not it has been indexed. Um, as you can see, this URL is on Google. Uh, if it wasn't on Google, we would be notified that this URL isn't on Google. Would you like to request indexing? Um, but as it's already on there, we do also have this option of, you know, has the page changed? So have we changed any content for an event, for example? Have we updated dates? Have we updated pricing? Um, have we uh, changed the features? Um, well, that type of thing, we could request that to be, be re-indexed. Um, and we'll also get a little bit of information here in regards to the coverage. Um, are there any um, issues with it? Is indexing allowed? Are there any problems that they've found? Uh, and a lot of useful information there. But yes, that one's really great for when you've got new pages or pages that you've updated. So if you've gone through and made a heap of changes from an SEO perspective, like updating page titles and meta descriptions, you want to get that information into the search engine index as quickly as possible. So really, really helpful to be able to give that um, content directly to Google uh, and make their job easier as well. So come back and check it out. Cool, so just going through a few other things that you can do within Search Console. Uh, some of these you can access from that first overview screen. We've got performance. We can also select performance from the left-hand side menu. <coughs> Excuse me. This is one of my favorite reports. After those two other tools, this is my favorite report within Google Search Console. So this is actually showing you the performance of your website in Google's search engine. Um, and this is the one that I'll also show you how to integrate with Google Analytics as well. So what it shows us here is based on the particular time period we're looking at, by default we're looking at the last three months, so we can edit that there. This number shows us how many times has a result for our website been shown in Google's search results. So not just how much traffic we've had from Google search results, but how many times have we actually been shown in Google search results. Then we have how many clicks, how many total clicks has our website gotten from Google search results. It then also shows us the average click-through rate. So based on the, the number of times that the website's been shown and the number of clicks, what's the average click-through rate from search for our website? And then also, what's the average position for our website in search results based on the various keywords or search queries. And then we can scroll down and get some really useful information here in regards to the exact keywords, those exact queries 
that people are typing into Google search engine that happens to be showing our website in search results. And then for each of those, we can see the total number of impressions for that time period, the total number of clicks, the overall click through rate, and the average position that our website appears for that particular search query. And each of these columns can be reordered simply by clicking on it. So we can see there are certain, um, uh, our website appears for the search query digital marketing, but on page eight, so on an average of 76. So not surprisingly, that actually hasn't had many clicks. And we can see here, there's lots of keywords that you may actually um, be appearing for in search results, but be appearing quite low. So this is actually quite useful. Um, it's a useful SEO research tool. Uh, again, we can't type in and ask where are we appearing for this particular search query, but this is just showing us um, the search queries that our website is already indexed for and already ranking for, whether they're performing well or not. And we can go through and look at, look at all of these. Some of them might be relevant, some of them might be less relevant, but we can have a click around here as well. So we can see which queries we've got the most impressions for or the least impressions for, the highest click-through rate or the lowest click-through rate, the, the lowest position or the highest position as well. So clicking through here, we can go and see things like, okay, what keywords are we ranking for really highly? Where are we really strong? Um, are these all relevant to us? But then we can continue to scroll and search and have a look through there, through here to see any other, some other keywords that we're not appearing as well for that we'd like to, that we can focus on. Um, you just have to click on the uh, boxes at the top to get average click-through rate and average position as well. Um, if you unclick them, they'll start to disappear. So only clicks show by default, but if you click on impressions, click through rate and position, the other columns will pop up there as well. Um, and all of this information can be exported. So you can export this information into a CSV file or directly to Google Sheets if you wanna do some more research. Um, and there's some filtering options through here as well. So queries is the information I look at the most, um, but you can also click around here and see your pages. So what are the actual pages that are appearing in search results? How many impressions and clicks are they getting? What position, what click through rate? Uh, we can look at countries. So, cause this is looking at all of the search activity in Google search index. So where does most of the activity come from? Um, is there a particular country uh, that, that's actually interesting. There's a you know, much higher click-through rate in Greece for our website than there is for uh, um, in Australia. Um, we can also look at which devices these searches are happening on as well. And this is really, really useful information because it's not just the people who end up coming to our website, but it's showing us the potential of our site in Google search engine as well and giving us that understanding of, okay, how much search activity is actually happening for these types of um keywords that we're showing for on desktop versus mobile versus tablet. And then we've also got some information about the search appearance as well. So most search results are just shown as regular snippets. Um, so that's the, the basic page title, URL and meta description. Uh, but there are some different uh, types of ways that your content can appear in search results. So rich results. I was talking about this in our further SEO technique session yesterday, we're talking about structured data and rich snippets, um, events uh, and those types of things as well. But the queries information, I think if nothing else, is super, super useful. Um, and a way that you can make this even more useful and accessible is to integrate it with your Google Analytics. Um, so as much as I love Google Search Console, it's not something that I'm logging into every day or even every couple of days. We have some specific tasks that we use it for and we jump in on a bit of a bit of a case by case basis. So um, it's nice when you can make use of these integrations with Google Analytics because I'm much more likely to log into Google Analytics and try and get this type of information from there as well. So one of the things that it makes me very sad because I've been working with Google Analytics for a long time now and I remember the days where we used to be able to click from organic search into the keyword report and we'd get a lovely long list of all the hundreds and thousands of keywords that people had typed in to bring them to our website. Those were very, very happy days. We had a great understanding of what keywords people were um, searching for and then what uh, they were ending up doing on their website as well. 
However, um, in October 2011, Google decided to hide this information. So they revealed on their site that when a search is made on a secure Google web page, which Google went to a secure web page and the results clicked, the search terms no longer going to be passed onto the destination website. Instead, these are all going to be grouped together as not provided. So most websites will generally see about 98 or 99% of their search terms are listed as not provided. And there might be a few that sneak through from other um, uh, search engines that come through there as well. So Google said they did this officially. Um, they said they did this in the name of privacy. So they've suggested that those searching on a secure Google connection wouldn't necessarily want their search term passed on to the destination website. However, they are still tracking this because they've got all this information in Google Ads and we've also got it in Google Search Console. Um, so uh, you'll see here on the left-hand side that there is a section in acquisition of your Google Analytics reports called Search Console. Uh, and if you click on that and see this message, this report requires Google Search Console integration to be enabled, then that indicates that your website is not um, uh, integrated with Google Search Console already. So you can simply click on that set up Search Console data sharing and you'll be able to connect your Google Analytics account with that verified Google Search Console property. Again, really easy if you have that common Google account that has access to both of those devices. And what this will actually then allow you to see is all of those keywords that you see within Google Search Console, it brings all of those into our Google Analytics account here in that Search Console query section. So unfortunately, it doesn't give us that follow through of from that keyword and the people who clicked on it, how many pages did they view? How long did they spend on website? Did they end up triggering any of our conversions or events or those types of things? It's literally bringing in those five columns from Search Console. We've got our search query, clicks, impressions, click through rate and average position. Um, so we don't have that, that full journey through. Uh, but again, I find it much easier to, to, to look at these kind of keywords within Google Analytics um, rather than going off separately to Google Search Console all the time as well. Um, and you can search through these keywords as well, just like you would in um, any other Google Analytics table if we wanted to see uh, what keywords include Google Ads and we can have that information and so on and so on. Um, and it also brings in those other reports we looked at, so landing pages, countries, devices um, and queries as well, but that's the one that I tend to look at the most. So definitely recommend um, integrating your Google Search Console with Google Analytics once your property has been verified um, to make use of that keyword information there as well. So other things you can do in Google Search Console, um, I mentioned crawl errors before. This now comes under the coverage report in your Search Console. It'll let you know any pages on your website that potentially have issues. Um, like I said, it's quite common for some websites to have some issues. Uh, this can happen. Servers can be slow. Pages can be slow for all sorts of reasons. Um, the, what we want, though, is to not see these red lines consistently going up and up and up and up and finding more and more and more errors. Um, but there might be some occasional um, errors, but ideally very, very small. Uh, and it will give you some information below about what the error actually is. We can click on it to get a little bit more information. In all of these cases, you can click on learn more to get an um, understanding of what a particular error actually means. Uh, usually it'll mean doing a little bit of work um, housekeeping on your website to fix something. And we'll see which pages are affected there. And then once you've actually fixed that, you can come back here and click on that validate fix. That just advises Google that you fixed up that issue on your page and there shouldn't be any problems next time they try and index it. So it's giving those little signals to Google to show that we care about our website, we're keeping it up to date and we're wanting to have a good experience, or provide a good experience to search engines as well as website visitors. 
So that's some information you can get in the coverage section. Um, another area I wanted to point out is in security and manual actions. Uh, you don't want to see any problems in here, <laughs> um, but this is where if for some reason there have been some issues with your website, um, if it's considered to be a spammy or malicious website, if it gets hacked, um, if you have a negative SEO attack or those types of things, uh, your website may be penalised. And um, Google Search Console would actually will advise you of any issues you might have there as well. Uh, and then again, you've got that option to communicate with them about the problem. Um, if it's something that you are unaware of, have been able to fix um, and can get your website reinstated in Google Search Engine Index as well. And then the same with the securities issues area. It's good to keep an eye on and see if there's any potential security issues with your website. So a couple of areas here. And like I mentioned, Google um, Search Console does send you out emails occasionally as well. Um, they don't send them out very often, which is great. So when they do, you know that it's uh, an important one. Um, so they will send out emails if there are any issues, uh, like major issues with um, crawl errors, like lots of crawl errors. Uh, being encountered on your website, um, any manual actions, any security issues. And they're also advising uh, webmasters when their website is being moved over to mobile first indexing as well. So it's pretty much giving you a direct line of communication with Google search index. And that's those options for that two-way communication as well, where they can advise your problems with your website and you can advise Google that you fix them, which is really, really awesome. Um, so there are a few other areas uh, that it can be worthwhile having a click around and getting familiar with, but those are really the main areas that I would suggest you focus on with your Google Search Console. Um, so keep in mind it's, a, it's separate to all of your other Google properties, even though it can be related to them. Um, it's all about how your website looks in Google's organic search engine. So the first thing you need to do is verify your website property. So use one of those five methods to confirm that you have permission to access um, this information from Google Search Index. Uh, then I would encourage you to find and submit your XML sitemap, which gives Google that direct access to crawl all pages of your website and will also allow you that visibility of when your website has been um, crawled and indexed as well. Uh, that URL inspection tool allows you to submit new or updated URLs to get them indexed super, super quickly. So that's a really, really fantastic um, tool. And like I said, introducing it into your workflow like we do, we have a natural process. New blog post goes live, new event goes live. We then go to Google Search Console and um, get all of those URLs inspected and updated. I uh, absolutely recommend integrating your Google Search Console with Google Analytics so you can get that search queries information. Um, and then it is, like I mentioned, one of those tools I don't access every day, but I know it's there that I can go and um, check uh, every so often to see if there are any kind of major crawl issues that I haven't been notified of, um, any manual actions, any security, but they do send out those email notifications as well. So um, again, that's going to go to the Google account. So you want it to be a primary account that somebody's actually going to see those notifications if they come out because they're generally quite serious and quite important. So that is what I had for you today in regards to getting to know Google Search Console. So hopefully that has been helpful. Uh, like I mentioned, this is being recorded and you'll receive a link to watch link to watch the replay after the session finishes. So if you do want to go back through um, and uh, play and pause to go step by step with verifying your property, um, setting up your XML sitemap and integrating with Google Analytics, uh, that will help you um, in that regard. Yeah. You can tell I'm still sick, can't you? <laughs> I'm struggling with my words a bit. It's been a very full on couple of days playing catch up from last week. Uh, so thank you again for joining. I'll stay 
online for another few minutes if anybody has any questions that they want to pop in the chat box or can pop in the bottom as well. Um, we will have another webinar coming up soon. I'm a little bit behind with all of the, the illness and bits and pieces. So keep an eye on our website and we'll send that out um, uh, in an email and on the social channels as well. But looking to do these about um, once a month. So if, you if there are any topics that you would particularly like me to cover, in a webinar, any ideas, do let me know. I'm thinking about, um, I've got some, there's some great reports in Google Analytics which can help you uh, assess um, and uh, the quality of your landing pages, um, which was a topic I was thinking about doing for the next webinar. So um, uh, measuring and, and testing and improving your landing pages in Google Analytics. But if there's any other topics, feel free to um, send them through to us on any of the social channels or pop them in the, in the chat there as well. So there I am. Bye. Um, I moved office as well while being sick. So it's a new background. I'm still getting unpacked and organized, uh, but you'll see a new background in all of the webinars and videos from now on. So hopefully settling into the new office soon. Um, thanks again for your time. Have a wonderful day. I'll be here on the chat for another few minutes if anybody has any questions. And I look forward to seeing you online or in person somewhere soon.